Hello everybody, welcome back to the shop and uh, the F14 Tomcat. So I, uh, past couple days, been kind of goofing off. Not really, I've actually been productive. Um, I got pretty much all of the Arex templates made for the fuselage tops, the forward and the aft mold. And I got all of the vertical stabs, the rudder, uh, the left wing panel and some other ten points made. I'll show you guys that here once I get done with these parts. What I'm doing now is I'm mixing up some epoxy for what you see in front, uh, the two primer gray. There's the upper and lower speed brake molds. Um, these are actually a separate molding from the, from the rest of the airplane. I've got to make up a pair of sacrificial ones that get permanently attached to the inside of the mold. That way I have a, uh, uh, that way a lip gets molded into the fuselage. When you pull it out, you'll automatically have a little recess for these parts to fit into. And I'm still kind of working out the layup for these. Since these aren't a flying part, they're not getting any carbon fiber. Uh, the flying parts will get some carbon fiber, but to make up for the lack of it in this, I'm just putting a, a couple extra layers of fiberglass in place. Um, again, these parts are, or these molds are free coat molds. I just sat there, wiped it on, wiped off the free coat, and let it sit for about 20 minutes to finish evaporating. Then I shot the primer on it and let that sit for about a half an hour while I made a, a fiberglass, or not a fiberglass, but an epoxy tank holder. I'll show you that here after in a bit as well. And that's pretty much about it. Uh, it took the majority of two days to do all those templates for just the top of the fuselage and what I've already done for the wing panel and the vertical stabs. Like I said, I cut it out of that yellow plastic. Um, I started to use a pair of oh, thin snips, and then realized very quickly that your hand in a, in an exact, in a sharp exacto knife worked better than the thin snips. All right, so basically all I'm doing for these sacrificial speed brakes Put some epoxy down, and I throw them one layer of glass on. And now, sit there and I'll walk this down with the, the brush. I'm not using the rollers that I showed you guys in the last video because I'm mostly saving those for larger items like the, the wings, the fuselage, flaps, stuff like that where you have a lot of epoxy to mix up at once. These are the little, the cheap Harbor Freight acid brushes work just as well, just more fine. So the first layer of fiberglass. Um, yeah, there's <laughs> not a whole lot to talk about. Since so these are sacrificial, no carbon fiber, they do get an extra two layers of fiberglass. So it'd be four layers of glass. Um, and then there's a layer of the Arex foam between the four layers as well. So it's centered between everything. Next layers of glass, these are the first the layers I just put on 
or just 090, these are on the bias and they're 45 degrees. The long portion here is 45 to uh, the part. That gives it some torsional rigidity. Most of your wing panels are always have their glass layers on the, on the bias. Because the spars are supposed to take all the bending load, so the skins provide the torsional rigidity, or so I'm told. Once I get these parts laid up, I can uh, turn the sides and then install them into the, the top and bottom mold segments of the fuselage. And mostly this one is the only one I have to do that to. The bottom mold of the fuselage, I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. Because I have a whole lot to do before I can even think about doing that particular mold. Here I got the little uh, the Airx phone. This is an Airx. This is actually a Rovacell 51. The um, reason I'm using this is because I have some. I don't plan on using this for anything else really. So I figured I'd use it on something instead of just having it sitting there going to waste. Um, this stuff's the same thickness as what I plan on using on the with the, the Airx stuff. So it's not gonna be thin or anything. It's just gonna, this is a little bit, this particular Rovic cell is a little weaker than the, the Airx I'll be using. And it's a different color. But it's essentially the same style of material. Using this Airx and the Roha cell foam up, I found that if you leave the epoxy um, a little heavy, a little, it helps the, the foam stick down, especially on compound curved areas. And then what it does is, as it, it'll help hold it down, and then you really put a lot of resin on top of it, and it'll help hold your, your fiberglass layers on as well. So the glass layers I did, I did a 90, then the bias, then the foam, and then I'm doing the bias again, and then the, the 90. This just keeps all of the, the weave directions the same, or at least stacked the same, and it gives it less of a chance to, to warp. that kind of sit there and soak up some epoxy. A little bit more here on this, this top speed brake. Like I said, a little bit actual epoxy helps. Helps that foam stick in place. Then there's that foam to foam piece. can't see it but through the glass I mean, you can actually see the uh, the outlines of that speed brake trimming portion and that's all I'm doing is I'm just sitting there lining this thing up with that you can see 
kind of the different colors through the foam, how it's a little darker in area, that's where the, the excess resin is kind of soaking into the foam. Then again, a whole bunch more of this stuff. A whole bunch more epoxy. So since I'm now in Florida, my plan is to have the fuselage, well basically have an airframe ready for Florida jets. Which means I got a whole lot of work to do. It, uh, it won't be flying, but it will be hopefully either sitting on the gear or at least a, a full airframe for people to kind of come and look at and see. That's it. Of course, if work will give me the time off to to go for a day or two. Hopefully, for those of you guys who go and get some good input, get some. Uh, oh, what's the word? Some good input and an interest in the airplane. And the last layer of glass. The uh, the last set I did of these, I put a lot of carbon in. I didn't have any of this this foam in here. Just the glass layup isn't gonna work. Same goes for the gear doors. I tried it on the gear doors, thinking that some carbon and uh, and then just the shape of the doors would help kind of give it some rigidity. And they were just like a piece of a piece of cheese. You know, they you could pick it up and it would just flop around. It was they they were they were worth, worthless. So the, the foam here is definitely necessary. Now on this top speed brake, there's a little indentation right here in the center. Um, the foam isn't shaped or anything. What will happen is the vacuum sucks it in. The, since there's more surface area on either side of it, it should just push that the foam and these last two layers of glass right into the, the indentation. On larger pieces for like the fuselage and whatnot, if there's like a little indentation or a, uh, a curved area, I'll actually kind of preform the foam with, with a heat gun and just some magnets. I'll throw some magnets on there to kind of hold it in, in a position. Now I'll take a heat gun to it and just let the heat, heat to work its magic on the foam. This stuff, it will, it is thermoformable, both this Rohacel and the Aerox, which makes makes things pretty pretty nice just because you can you can go in there with it, like the heat gun and just heat it up and it'll sit there and it'll form real nicely to it. Um, I've been told you can actually vacuum form this stuff and just heat it up a little bit and then suck it down over a form and it'll it'll hold it like that. I've never tried it. I've never seen it done. I'm sure 
some production places probably use that for some really complex parts. It'd definitely be something cool to do, just considering it'd be really easy to put a, a piece of Eric's foam in there that's already formed a shape. You could put all your glass and everything on, on the inside edge of it, put it in there on the, the glass on the outside or up against the mold surface, and basically put it in the vacuum bag. It'd probably save a lot of time. But then you gotta have all the back and form fixtures and all that stuff and then the machine big enough and more money, more time. It's not worth it for little hobby stuff. All right, so all of our uh, glass layers and everything are there. Um, field fly, of course. Put that over. For those of you guys using peel ply when you're uh, fiberglassing a, a wood structure or anything, don't don't squeegee the excess resin off. You want it, you want the resin to stay there because the peel ply kind of stays in place and it doesn't work if there's no resin for it to absorb. And in some instances, you can kind of the peel ply will tell you if you're a little uh, if you're a little resin leaning areas because it'll sit there and it'll kind of like, you can see the different looks to it, how it's kind of shiny in some areas, that's where a little bit extra resin is. And then you can actually still see the, the peel ply, it's like a really, kind of looks like a white cloud. If you see that in a lot of spots, you can actually take your resin and just put a little bit more in those areas and it'll, it'll work its way through to your fiberglass parts and it'll help eliminate a lot of your, your pinholes. Typically, I like to put a little bit of excess resin on top of the, uh, the peel ply anyways. Especially for these vacuum bag parts like this. For a balsa structure on glassing, I don't typically do it. It makes it a little bit harder to, to yank the peel ply off. But for, for this stuff, it, it seems to help a little bit. It's just a little bit of added uh, security that your parts are going to come out nice. So peel ply. Then perforated release plastic. This stuff I've found if you're if you're pretty good with your layups, you can actually reuse it two or three times. I bought my other piece and it's now fully off. Anyways, perforate plastic and then your, your breather material for your bleeder cloth, whatever you want to call it specifically. Now sit there. And we'll repeat it for the top speed break as well. you guys over to the other table I'll zoom in a bit try not to get my myself in the way see I got the vacuum fitting here in the middle of the bag um, I like to keep my vacuum fittings away from the part I found, especially with foam or, or balsa wood skin parts or vacuum bag parts, you'll actually, if you use a lot of vacuum, you'll actually imprint the vacuum bag fitting into your part. So I like to keep on either on the edge of the bag or in the center. And then my parts like this, I'll actually put one part on the other opposite side of the, the fitting and then another part on the other, and I'll leave a little gap in the middle. And then I'll just take a strip of that bleeder material and I'll just run between the two and under the vacuum bag today. And what that strip does, it kind of acts like a, uh, a, a bridge so you get back into both parts. And it also keeps a, the vacuum fitting away from your any epoxy. 
that way you don't have to worry about your vacuum fitting, sucking up epoxy into it and getting into the pump or whatever. I've got really long lines on my vacuum pump. I think they're about six foot. And I got about, uh, about eight of them. So that really long line adds another little bit of a little bit of an extra insurance. So it doesn't suck up epoxy or anything. Then I use one of my little ACP bag clips here. This is a 20 inch clip and this is an 18 inch vacuum bag tube. And then the end of it down there, um, all that is is just some cheap latex or acrylic bathroom caulk. Uh, don't use RTV silicon, that stuff will let air through. You have to use caulk, that's the, that's the key. This bag I've used probably a dozen, two dozen times. And this caulk is pretty hard, but it's still flexible. And it works out great. Now all that's in there, I pull a vacuum hose off here. I find one that's not all tangled up the rest of them. segment I told you that had like a little indentation you see that's right there and it just sucked the foam down just perfect into it so we'll give this stuff a little bit of time to uh, secure and then tomorrow we'll pop it out of the bag meanwhile move that over out of the way hear what I'm saying. Take the camera here off the tripod and we'll go show you some templates. Alright, that uh, that plastic sheet 